your girl Victoria back to you with another review for the Ultimate Fighter Season 31, Episode 5, Team McGregor versus Team Chandler. So Carlos and Brad are next to fight. And Connor, I guess before we get to any fight preps and learning about the people who are about to fight this week, this episode, uh, Connor comes to the tough house to have a little competition with his prospects to race each other on a conditioning circuit machine thing. And Aaron was the one who ended up winning. So that was a little, you know, it was cute to see, you know, nothing much, but, you know, it was nice to see. And then we get to Chandler. We see him talking with his assistant coach about Brad because I guess to them, Brad seems a little standoffish and to himself. So he doesn't want him to feel isolated or whatever the case may be. So then we see Brad come up to Chandler to talk to him and discuss with him about the training for the fight the following week with him versus Carlos. And Brad lets him know, listen, I'm not about to start no new routine before the fight because even two weeks of a new routine before before the fight is a little janky. So, I mean, I'm just letting you know I ain't about to do no new fights. And then we even see in the confessional... <laughs> Uh, Brad knows that he's a diva and he knows that Chandler might be a little tired of him, but you know, Brad, Brad is just like, well, you know, I, I've been here before. I've done this before. So it's like, I know what to expect. So I already, you know, I'm, I, I already won the ultimate fighter once, you know, I'm trying to make history be a two time ultimate fighter winner. So I don't gotta, you know, really go based off what you say, but I know what works for me. So I'm going to do what works for me. So, you know, I, it's cocky, diva-ish, absolutely. But at the same time, it's like, mm, I, I get it. You know, I'm not going to really talk too much like, oh, you doing this and that. Because you did win before. You do have a fighting career. You are a veteran. So it's I, I, it's one of those things where it's like, I'm going to have to just let you talk your shit. You know, because you do have something to stand on versus everybody else that's competing on this season. So I, I'll give you that, Brad. But, you know, just don't let it get to your head too much because we don't like that. We like people who are humble, okay? In my, for, for me, personally, I know other people, they could care less. But still, for me, you know, let's let's just be a little humble, okay? We we understand you want. Just a little humble, please. So, uh, Brad then gets in his confessional talking about how he won the Ultimate Fighter Season 27. And congratulations once again. And then we get to the rest of the veterans. We see them waiting on the bus, waiting for Brad. And they're annoyed, Roosevelt the most, because he's the only one, well, that the producer show in the confessional, talking about Brad and how he likes the other team, so he might as well just put on a blue shirt. So, listen, Roosevelt, this is why I don't care for you. Because I understand people, other people probably talk crap on the confessional, maybe the producer's just not showing us, but I feel like you personally, uh, Roosevelt, you talk the most crap. It used to be Kurt, which... I'm so surprised. I haven't heard Kurt since episode two. I haven't heard one word from homeboy. You, you, you've been talking since like episode one. Okay. So Roosevelt, I'm gonna need you to relax. I understand you don't care for homeboy. I understand you and everybody else is annoyed, but you're the one who got the most to say about everybody. I'll give it to you. You won <clears throat> your, when you went against, uh, I don't remember who, but you, I, I'll give it to you one. You are a veteran and all that stuff. But at the same time, just, just sometimes it's best to be quiet. Sometimes it's best not to say nothing, okay? We don't need, you don't need to <clears throat> say something every time, sorry. So, Roosevelt, please, with all disrespect, just, just settle down, okay? Simmer down. So, anyway, uh, we get to learn about Carlos and his family, his life, and a fighting career. So, that was nice, you know. He represents Ecuador to the fullest. I, I ain't mad at it. That's cool. So, then <clears throat> we get to Carlos' fight prep. And turns out that Brad's coach, like his personal coach, you know, outside of this whole ordeal, is actually one of the coaches or, you know, assistant coaches, whatever you may, whatever they put on there, it, um, for the, <laughs> for Team McGregor on the prospect side. So I guess Brad's coach said, you know, because of the fact that, you know, I do coach Brad, I'm going to stay out of this fight. Understandably so, you know, conflict of interest. So that's, that's, I don't know if they made you do it or if he decided to do it, but I think that's best. So you going to do that next week too? Uh, cause Lee about to go up and from what Lee said, they have the same coach. Him and Brad have the same coach. That's why they're friends and all that stuff. They train together, whatnot. So he going to stay uh, out next week too? 
that's what should happen. I'm just saying. But okay, so good for you. That's great. Uh, otherwise, the fight prep goes well. We then get to Brad's fight prep, and you know it goes well. And they even show a clip of him, the team, and Chandler all watching Carlos's fights to see his techniques and how he fights and whatnot, which I think is a you know effective way to like kind of learn who your opponent is, so you can know how to get him in his weak spot. So I thought that was good. I don't know if they do that for every fight or even if team mcgregor does that but from i think that's hey listen i don't think that's wrong because i know some movies and stuff they try to show that like cheating and stuff not really you just trying to make sure you win so i'm not mad at it and then we get to learn about brad's fighting career and family and life because this is when he's talking with lee in a tough house and that's when we find out that they both have the same coach they train together they're friends all that stuff so you know, that's nice. You know, come to find out his girlfriend is a professional fighter as well. So that's pretty cool. And, you know, when I get to learn about both of them, you know, usually I gear towards one side more than the other. But in this one, I'm kind of 50-50 because of the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for Carlos because I feel like obviously he's the underdog. And, you know, I feel like he has more meaning to why he's doing what he's doing because, you know, he wants to represent Ecuador. And, you know, he's, it's always been his dream to one day just raise, you know, his home flag and be like, hey, we on the map. I get it, okay? So that's why, you know, emotionally, <laughs> I feel like I'm more towards Carlos. However, looking at stats and stuff, I I'm gearing more towards Brad because he already won the Ultimate Fighter once. So he's on here again. He is a veteran. He has a, like, more of a fighting career, so to speak, versus Carlos. So when we go versus stats and stuff, I got to lean towards Brad, but it's, but emotionally, is like, I wish, you know, I'm rooting for the underdog. I'm going to Carlos. But this was 50-50, so I'm neutral in this situation. So whoever wins is like, it, they win. And I'm not going to be upset. Or, it, it, is, it, it is what it is. So after that, we get to the weigh-ins. Brad is 135.5, and Carlos is also 135.5. They face off. All right, cool. And then we get to fight day. We see Carlos, he's meditating by the pool. That's cool. And, you know... Brad is talking all this talk, like not, you know, talking crap, but kind of just like, you know, he going to do that, do what he got to do in the ring. And that's what it is. However, I got to make this comment. <clears throat> Brad, you know, he, he, he just be having some, you know, concerning looks in the confessionals. Uh, it's just, just like, why do you have to look at us so intently on camera? You know, cause like, he'll be talking like, like literally all up in the camera like this eyes locked on the uh, camera and just like letting us know that you know he gotta do what he has to do because it is not gonna you know any other way is not gonna work okay you know he's gonna go in the ring he's gonna you know show ass and he's gonna win that fight because you know he's gonna be the the ultimate fighter winner champion two times making history and I'm just, okay, I'm like, Brad, first off, back up. Okay, back up. You do not need to be this close. Your eyes don't need to be so wide and dilated looking like this. Calm down, okay? All y'all, is relax, Brad. You don't have to look so intently and, like, like, you got a girlfriend, okay? So, like, when y'all having intimate moments, sexual relations, whatever you want to call it, okay, do you look at her like this? And then as you're, and you know, I want to ask the girlfriend too, like, is this okay to you? Like, do, does that turn you on? Because for us, it creeps us out. Well, for me, you know, I don't know about anybody else. But for me, I'm just like, you don't need to look at us like this, Brad. Like, please, can you put some sunglasses on or something? Because I'm just, I, I'm I'm weirded out. I, I'm, I'm weirded out. So that's also what I want to say about Brad and his little confessionals, but... I ain't really feeling it. But anyway, they show the stats and, you know, we see Carlos is 35, Brad is 31. Okay, I can see Brad 31. Carlos, okay. You know, I, I feel like I just have a bad perception on age because sometimes I just be looking at their age and their face and I'm like, it's not matching up. But, you know, okay, he's 35. I mean, I he's in his mid-30s, so okay, I guess, you know. And then we get to... About to do start round one. Carlos looks nervous because I feel like he's regretting that he chose the prospects. No offense to the prospects. But, I mean, like I said, the proof is in the pudding. I am so sorry, prospects. So, round one, they both dominated. Nothing really to say about round one. 
Um, round two, all I can comment. I mean, they both dominated again in round two, uh, but you can tell Carlos was a little more winded versus uh, Brad. And after round two, McGregor uh, was just like, you know, there needs to be three rounds. There needs to be three rounds. And, you know, too bad for you, uh, McGregor, because um, Brad won. You know, so he won and... Even Chandler was like, well, ain't no need to be three rounds because we can already see he won both rounds. And, you know, sure enough, the judges said Brad won. So, obviously, McGregor is upset, you know, and Chandler's feeling on top of the world. And I'm just kind of like, when I'm watching these fights, I do like the fact that now these ep in these later episodes, they're showing more so like the whole fight versus only like little snippets of the fights. What I will say for McGregor, yeah, he comes to the tough house. Chandler don't come to the tough house from what we've seen. But I, I would suggest for McGregor, you need to be more interactive. I know you be interactive when you do the fight day and, you know, I mean, the fight prep, you know, and trying to show the moves and whatnot. But I just feel like you're not there at the weigh-ins. You're not, I mean, you're there for the fighting. But you see Chandler, he's right up and close and personal into the fence, literally sitting at the fence. You you're somewhere, you know, in the mix shouting, but it's like, I feel like you, it would be more effective of you trying to give um, pointers out. I wonder if I, I don't know what's going on with me and my sinuses right now, but I feel like if Connor was right at the gate, just like Chandler is, I feel like they would be more like, okay, I'm hearing what he's saying. Let me do this. Let me do that. So it's like sometimes when they don't do what you're suggesting, you get upset. But at the same time, it's like, why can't you get up and close and personal? Chandler's up close and personal right there at the fence. I feel like, I, I, I don't know, just a suggestion. You know, maybe you want to be right there at the fence to give suggestions out. Maybe they'll hear you and do it. Because they do hear you, but just a little bit more support, Connor. You know, maybe that's something to shake it up. Since you be trying to shake things up because, um... You're not winning, uh, unfortunately for you. Um, okay, so, you know, Carlos is a little disappointed, but he's staying positive, which is great. McGregor is pissed, you know, what else is new? And saying, you know, it's unfinished fights. You just mad because y'all, your, your team not winning. If your team was winning, you would have nothing to say, right? You, you would be through the roof. You would be saying there's no need for no third round. So it's because your team is losing and it's literally five to zero at this point. So now you're at your wit's end and you're going to fuss about it. You know, I understand being upset, but at the same time, you know, it was a fair fight. So anywho, uh, he still lets Carlos know that it was a good fight. So that's cool. And that was it for this episode. Next, we find out Lee and Kurt are next to fight next week. And Lee is, I guess, supposedly Connor's protege. Okay. Is that going to work? Because it might be 6-0 to zero next week. Um, from, from what the stats is looking like. It's not, like I said, so sorry my sinuses are. Okay. <laughs> I'm back. So sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. I I go to imagine if anybody listening to this on their headphones. I'm so sorry. This is, this is not the beat. Anyway, what I was going to say was, you see these red lights? Ah, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, it's just not looking good for prospects, man. It is literally five to four. There is, what, three fights left between, you know, each. I don't know where they go after this, but, I mean, it looks like all the veterans are going to be in the semifinals at this point. So, once again, McGregor, you sure you wanted to choose the prospects first? Okay. But like I said, Lee and Kurt are next to fight. And once again, I'm surprised I didn't hear nothing from Kurt. I'm so I'm very surprised because he was like he was talking so much crap the first two episodes and after that we didn't hear nothing from Kurt. So we're gonna about to hear his mouth probably again next week. And then we're gonna see McGregor and Chandler facing off and but, uh, Chandler ain't like you seen Chandler, he seemed like he wasn't even phased by it, but McGregor's pissed just because he ain't winning. That's all it is. Anyway, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you laughed at least once, please subscribe. If you didn't laugh, come back next week. Hopefully, I can make you laugh so you can subscribe. And let me know what you thought about this episode. Comment down below. Be easy, breezy, lemon, squeezy. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.